Welcome back to Dragon Army Books. My name is Dustin, and if you don't know yet, I like to read books. So far this year, I've read 35 of them. That is 18 books ahead of schedule, like last year. This year, I planned to read 52 books, which for those mathletes out there, it comes down to one book a week. Uh, and then at the end of each month, I like to do these mini reviews on the books that I read in a month, a wrap up. Um, I, I don't do full video reviews of every book that I read. That would just be too, too much. Uh, and you wouldn't care about half of them or more. And so I like to do these wrap up videos talking about the books that I read along with mini reviews so that you could many, many reviews so that you can know uh, what books I'm reading and my quick thoughts on them. These are the books that I read in the month of April. And there are timestamps in the notes below and on the little time bar so that you can jump to any book that you are particularly interested in. Without further ado, let's get straight in to the many, many reviews of the books that I read in April. The first book was released by C.L. Clark on March 23rd. It's called The Unbroken. It is a North African inspired fantasy story about a country divided and the fates of two women. One is a soldier, the other is a princess and their fates become hopelessly intertwined with one another. Uh, it is an interesting book. It is a slowly slash poorly paced book that is not a fun, lighthearted fantasy romp, but some like deep, profound uh, expose talking about colonialism, privilege, so many different things within there. And while some of the things that are being taught or said are good, it takes a long time to get us there. And the first half of the book is all the setup for when the action actually takes place in the second half of the book. I think that many people are going to put this book down before they ever get to what parts of the book make it so interesting and engaging. I finished it, but I didn't love the whole experience. While C.L. Clark surely has a promising future in the book world, this first entry isn't the best and I would only imagine that they continue to build up on this not only in the series but in Clark's future works as well. The Zero Chronicles is a collection of three different audio experiences by author Dan Wells. It is Zero G, Dragon Planet, and Stargazer. And I do not believe the series is over yet, but these audio experiences were free on Amazon. And so I listened to them rapidly. They are quick stories. They are fully voice casted with a light music and sound effect bed that's not distracting, uh, but really engaging and a lot of fun. These are middle grade, silly, but really, really good stories. Every once in a while, I like to break away from the normal, like grim, dark, heavy fantasy, like pound me with like political commentary and, and all of these things to just read something about a kid lost out in space. It's Home Alone in Space. That's book one. Book two is Home Alone 2 um, on this new planet. And then book three is a different kind of uh, story altogether. But it all centers around this young boy who's nick nicknamed Zero, um, who wakes up on a spaceship. Uh, it's a colonial spaceship. They're going to a new planet. And um, he's the only one that's awake. He's got to figure out why space pirates come on board. That's how the story starts. They get to the planet that they're eventually going to in book two and there's a whole sort of exofauna and exoflora to explore. He's got a new companion with him uh, who is an ex-pirate herself and there's dragons on the planet. It's so good. The third story, they have to find another civilization that may have already crash landed on the planet a long time ago. It's it's a lot of fun. It's light. It's not going to do anything profound, but if you're looking for a quick, easy to listen to, really fun story uh, to just kind of break away from the, the, the normal thick fantasy maybe that you more prefer, then I would encourage you to check out these three audio experiences by Dan Wells. And then I return to The Banished Lands with John Gwynn's Valor. This series, The Faithful and The Fallen, is is a new favorite of mine, but I'm conflicted with it, to be honest. And I've said that. I've got a full review of both Malice and Valor. You can check out those links in the annotation. And Malice is the first book in the series. Valor is the second. I believe that it is a, a four-book series. And so... 
I, I know now what to expect. There's a lot of world building. It's a massive world. There's a cast of characters at the beginning of this book that are 94, I believe, characters long. And there are a dozen plus POVs. It's too much to keep up with for me. It's not my preferred kind of epic fantasy, but I'm still enjoying it. Gwen is an expert at his characters and at their relationships with one another. The brother-sister relationships, the brother-brother relationships, the mother-son relationships, the... There's so many different relationships. And then there's pet companion slash companions that are so amazing too. There's so some deep lore going on here in Valor. We get some of the big reveals that we saw coming, but that were set up in the previous book. And a lot of good things are done here. I thought it was even better than Malice. If you, if you remember in Malice, I had to wait like 400 pages to really start getting some of that payoff. Uh, but here, while it was still slower than what I would like, uh, it's it it I knew what to expect. I knew the characters. I knew the world enough at this point to be able to skip over some of that, you know, groundwork that I had to do with Malice. I ended up giving this book Valor 4.5 stars. And then I heard really good things about this sci-fi novella series about Binti. Uh, and I wanted to read it. So I've, I've got the full collection so far this month, this past month, I read Binti, the first novella, and then Binti Sacred Fire, which is a short story that was written sometime after the first few novellas were written. I believe it's a tr trilogy of novellas along with a short story, Sacred Fire. And I, I, I love it. This is how you write sci-fi short stories and novellas. Um, I read the Murderbot series or diaries, uh, a couple of them and talked about why I think that series is overrated. Again, you can check out that video in the annotation. I think this is how you do it. It's about a young 16 year old Himba girl who has been granted admittance to this prestigious university on a different planet. Um, but she has to leave behind her family and her culture and her people to be able to go there on the way there. Her spaceship is attacked by um, some unfriendly at first, at least aliens. And um, it leaves, her, Binti, is the only human left alive. That is how the first book takes place. Don't want to give you much more than that. Sacred Fire is a little bit of an extension there. Really can't give you much more without giving some spoilers. And so I'm really enjoying these. I've kept them all around. I, th I think Binti, this first one was four stars. Sacred Fire was a little bit less than that because it's just a short story that's not really necessary, but gives us a little bit of a, of a glimpse at a portion of Binti's experience and life. Uh, but it, man, it, it's good. It's a lot of fun. It's fairly shallow because it's novella, right? You can't do tons of world building or character depth or development here, but still we get a enough especially of the character work with this novella and um, I, I'm excited to read the rest of the series next up is a book by JL called wings of ebony I wanted to like this book a lot my one of my favorite authors, Saba Tahir, recommended this book. She's friends with the author. And so I thought, you know what? On that blind uh, suggestion, I'm going to read it. Picked it up. The cover is stunning, absolutely gorgeous. And the story is not. The story's okay. It presents itself as this YA book, but it's dealing with a lot of more kind of mature, more complex themes and ideas and concepts. Let me give you the plot. Rue is a teenage girl from Houston. Here's the, here's part of the problem. I don't love urban fantasy and this is, this is big time on that. So kind of new getting in, but, um, her life is just normal and, until her mother is, uh, gunned down, um, and in front of her. And then she's swept away by her father to a, the magical world of Gizon. I haven't really pronounced it out loud. And then she's having to try to um, figure out her identity and her home and place between these two worlds, the magical world of Gizan, Gizan and the <laughs> our world of Houston, Texas, right? Um, and, and, and the two cultures that vary between there. The magic system was just um, unimaginative. unimaginative. Uh, the... The characters were just kind of flat. I didn't feel connected to any of them. And again, I, I just don't know if this book knew what it was trying to be. It was trying to be a few different things in, in one book that kind of clashed. I ended up giving it 2.5 stars, which says a lot without having to say very much. 
And finally, the newest book in the Chronicles of St. Mary's series by Jody Taylor called Another Time, Another Place. I did an interview with the author, my first author interview, my only so far author interview. You can check out that video in the annotation. But I love Jody. I love this series. It is, in my opinion, one of the most criminally underrated series, and she is one of the most criminally underrated authors of our time. It, she she's not the most prolific. She doesn't have the most creative prose. It's not the most uh, like epic storytelling, but what she's trying to accomplish she does in spades. It is so well done. The characters are so interesting. The time traveling aspects where we go through different places in history to study history in contemporary time, which is just time travel. And uh, it's great. All of it was turned up to 11 here in this story. Tons of reveals. I, it's the 11th main book in the series. I can't possibly tell you much about the plot except go and read the series. Start at the beginning, one damn thing after another. That's the first book, right? And and you're going to love it. You're going to fall in love with these characters. You're, and it's not even that much of a commitment. I know the whole series is, but try the first book. It's it's relatively short. If you don't, and it's a very easy read. I've called it like bubblegum fiction, where it's just light and frilly and somewhat fluffy, but so much fun. Uh, I, I would implore you to check out the series if you haven't yet. I gave this book four stars out of five. Still not perfect, but way up there. And I could read the Chronicles of St. Mary's series until I die which is hopefully a long time from now. Jody Taylor, keep writing. Please keep writing. Those are the books that I read in the month of April. If you have any thoughts on any of those books that I read, let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any suggestions of what books I should read in the month of May, drop those below as well. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch and like this video. If you haven't yet, click subscribe, join the Dragon Army, and we'll see you in the next one.